and welcome to the What to Read Next podcast. In this podcast, your host, Lori and me, will invite a bookish guest to share their favorite book recommendation. If you share a passion for books and always looking for your next read, then join us. Welcome to the What to Read Next podcast. Today's bookish guest is Tama from Shape and Page Instagram Instagram. Hi, Tama. Tell us a little hey. bit. Hi. Are you? Thanks for having my crazy self on today. I am so excited to chat with you. I've been following you. I've been loving your recommendations, your reviews. We are super fans of Rachel Reed's Hit It Rivalry. So, <laughs> Sheen and Ilya forever. Yes. <laughs> so, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, as you said earlier, my name is Tima. Team a roll. I am in my late 30s. <laughs> late. I mean, late, late, late. Me, me, too. me too. I am like, it's my last year. I just turned 39. So yeah. And I um I'm originally from the Bahamas, but I am now in Oklahoma City. I've been I've been in America since I was 17 years old. Okay. So I came for college. So I've been Girl, I've been everywhere, ripping and running different states. My family call me a little gypsy because I like to move around. I just, I don't like staying stagnant. You know, I like to try new things and stuff like that. So, yeah. But I'm now in Oklahoma City. I am an accountant for the state of Oklahoma. So, okay. like I tell people, I'm as dumb as I look. <laughs> <laughs> So where did you go to college? I went to college. I moved to the States at 18 because I went to college. I'm from Puerto Rico. So we're from the Caribbean, you know? Yeah. I went to college in um, Raleigh, North Carolina at St. Augustine's University. So oh. yeah, 17 year old, fresh out of the Bahamas. I mean, yes. fresh. Yep, I know. I to America and, you know, that was my first time in North Carolina. And when my, um, when my family left me, I bawled. Like, I cried so much. I did not come out of my room unless it was for class. And I think I decided to come out of my room when I didn't have enough food. So I had to go to the cafeteria. Oh <laughs> and I would hear... I would hear my roommate's friends like, is she going to wake up? And I was like hiding under the covers because I was scared. I didn't know anybody. So, you know, when I decided that I was hungry and I had no food, I got up out of the um, room and went to the cafeteria. Then I started meeting people. But until then, I was just like, okay, y'all ain't but to get me caught up. I'm fresh, straight from the Bahamas. I was scared. It was my first time away from home, like, for mm-hmm. long periods of time. Yep. And I would call and I would cry until I met this, this girl from, um, where she was from? Bermuda. I oh, met, okay. Sh- yes, I met Shadi from Bermuda. And it was, you know, it was different. She had a little accent. So I was like, oh, I have an accent too. So, <laughs> so we kind of like, got close and then she introduced me to some other people because she was there i think that was her second year so she introduced me to some people and then i just blossomed out of my shell and yeah, <laughs> yeah. so that's the background information oh and i'm also born on halloween so my Ooh. birthday's coming up <laughs> your birthday's coming up that's amazing I know. Yeah, yeah i can identify with like fresh out of you know, fresh out of the boat <laughs> like i was like a came from puerto rico like at 18 i was like i have no idea what i'm doing i've never seen this place there's a lot of snow i went to syracuse so i did not experience snow ever before <laughs> i was like same yeah same <laughs> But I think my first experience in snow, I can't, I fell down my first time because I did not know how to walk in it. Yeah. It was my first time seeing snow. Actually, it was my first time in weather under 60 degrees. Mm-hmm. I was like, are you kidding me? I know. Did you have a coat? Because I did not have a coat. I bought my first coat in Old Navy. Like, I, was like, I was like, oh, I need I a coat. Was prepared. I had a coat because me and my family, we went to Florida and we kind of like did some little shopping before oh, I yeah. went to state. But I actually had a coat, but it wasn't the right coat, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so I had to get another coat. But, you know, I feel like I'm well versed in this 
winter life now somewhat. Yeah, I feel you. Yeah. <laughs> I, I live in New York for 14 years. So then, but I just moved to Chicago and I'm like, I got a winter in Chicago that I'm like not looking forward to it. <laughs> I don't know how I'm going to do this, but I work from home. So that's the beauty of it. So. I wouldn't even dream of a winter in Chicago. I've heard about their winters and I will pass. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we'll see. I have not experienced. I just opened it before the pandemic. So <laughs> yeah. it's one of those things. Awesome. All right. Let's get back to get out of the tangent. <laughs> yes. <laughs> For the getting to know each other as friends. Uh, so tell us when did you start reading moments and what do you love about the genre? You know, um, I, I think I picked up my first romance book at nine because my oldest sister, she was um, she was a big romance person. Like she loved romance and I would hide it in my room under the pillow at nine. I will not lie. I would go straight through the books. And when I would see the sex scenes, I'd be like, oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so I would hide it. But I think what solidified my love for romance was at, I think it was 14, where I kind of like made it my favorite genre. When I was in California for a wedding, I was 14 at a time. Everybody was gambling and going to casinos. I was too young to go to casinos. So my cousin's mother-in-law threw a Brenda Jackson book in my hand and she was like, well, you might as well read this because you can't do nothing else. That's when I it actually solidified my love for romance. And she sent me back to the Bahamas with a box full of romance novels. Oh like really, really, really full. So that's when I spent my, I think I spent the rest of my summer mm -hmm. reading like romance novels. And she would mail me books from California because we was in LA. Long Beach, I think, Long Beach. And she would mail me books from California and she would kind of like feed my addiction to this romance that I was like, oh my God, I love this. And it's so funny that she passed away. She passed away two years ago and in her will, she left me romance books. Oh my God. Yes, she did. <laughs> I have like four boxes in my, actually, no. I think it's about two boxes that I got from her daughter okay. that is still in my garage that I have to go through and actually get. I need a, a book, a bookshelf. <laughs> so she left me boxes of romance novels. So how did you get your books? Other than you're getting them sent out to you and to the Bahamas, do you get them also in the bookstores over there, libraries, or how does that work over there? Because it's in Puerto Rico, there's only books here. The libraries don't work. So I would actually the when I got my books, I would get it when I would tra uh, travel to Florida yep. or she would mail me books because yeah. the mailing system in the Bahamas at that time was slower than molasses. I mean, it was slow. So it's easier to just go over to Florida. And then when I, and sometimes when she would mail me books, I would already have it because the mailing system was so slow. And when we would just go over to Florida because my Island was like 50 minutes from Florida. Oh. So it's just easier to just go to Florida and then grab the books. And by the time the books that she sent me reach, I had multiple books. Like I had two copies of the same book because we read like the um the same genre. But yeah, I like. Go ahead. Yeah, no, no, yeah, keep going. Ahead. I, I I think I um I think at this age I can finally admit that I'm a lover of love. Like I just love love. I want to you know feel that happy ever after you know i think that's why i love romance so much because one i feel like it's relatable characters it's in every story is different and you have a character that at least you can relate to something that this character did even if it's stupid you'd be like i did that before <laughs> and i just love the thought of happily the happy ever after because you know it's guaranteed some, I mean, it depends on the romance that you pick. Sometimes it's happy for now. Sometimes it's, you know, eh, it really ain't happy. But I pick happy ever after. That's yeah. what I like. So I think it's, um, it's the happy ever after for me. Yeah, that's what it is. Because, I mean, right now it takes me 
out of my element. It takes me out of reality. And right now, yeah, <laughs> I need a happy ever after right now. <laughs> yeah. So I think that's why I love romance so much. I love it. Yeah, I'm all about the happily ever after. As someone who likes to read, like, I don't like open-ended endings where it's like, you know what's going to happen. I'm like, no. I want to no. know that you're going to be together and they're going to be happy and you're going to be fine. I don't care if they have a baby and you have a baby, if they chose to have a dog. I don't care about that. I just care, like, you're going to have a happy ending. You know? Are they happy? Did they, did they, did they uh, actually deal with their issue? Are they happy? Because once they're happy, I'm happy and I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. So let's talk about Black women's authors. Where do you go to authors? And what are some of the gems that you've discovered this year? Okay. My go-to authors... Brenda Jackson is my all-time favorite because she's my first. She's the first yes. I picked up. And from her, it just opened a can of worms. So I will always go back to Brenda Jackson. I'm a big fan of hers. And um, I also like Alexandria House, Christina C. Jones, Cheryl Lister is another uh, one of, you know, the books that I picked up way back in the day. And... Rochelle Allers is one of the OGs, and also Stephanie Nicole Norris. They are my, you know, go-to. I, um, I think this year I am um, stepping out of my box a little more and meeting and actually, actually not meeting, but trying new authors, like different authors, because usually I'm stick to what I know type of person. Mm -hmm. I'll wait until my favorite author drop a book and then I'll read that and I'll wait until somebody is like, okay, you should try this book. So now I find myself actively going out looking for new um, authors who write Black romance. So how and, do you find these authors? How do you find, how do you discover those authors? Tell us, tell us your secret. <laughs> you know, because you're, <laughs> well, I, I don't want to Google it. Like, we're like, okay, well, like, what other ways you can do? I actually have an awesome group of women that I, um, that also read Black romance mm -hmm. on Instagram. And usually I go to, you can go to Amazon yep. and you can find all the black romance there on Amazon. If you're a Kindle reader like me, I'm a, I'm a big time Kindle ebook reader. They're usually on Amazon. And I follow a lot of African American um, black romance um, authors on Instagram. Mm -hmm. And usually from their page, I find new authors, I find new books. So I have people that keep me in the know. And I I'll do a lot, a lot of searching on Amazon. I mean, the romance, the black romance is out there. You just got to do the work. You understand? You can follow, you can follow um, bloggers, black book bloggers, black book bookstagrammers, but you know what it is that you like to read. Go on Amazon, put it in the search bar. Promise you it's there. You just got to do the work. Yes. <laughs> yes. I love it. Yeah. I personally, I get my recommendations from bookstagrammers, from booktube, mm -hmm. and then I go on Kindle Unlimited and then see what is out there. <laughs> you know, and let me tell you, Kindle Unlimited is like gold mine. There's so many books here. The saving grace. I'm telling you, and a lot, a lot of African-American Black romance authors, they depend on Kindle Unlimited. So yep. a lot of their books are going to be on Kindle Unlimited. I promise you. And it's so many good authors out there. It's just like, ooh, it's like a kid in a candy store. You know what it is that you're looking for? And then I like how Amazon, when you finish a book, they give you more recommendations. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's a little sketchy. Sometimes it's iffy. Yeah. But at least 90% of the time, you will be able to find what it is that you're looking for. If you enjoy the book, they give you more recommendations, but it's there. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> I figure our listeners are always looking. They're like, we want to expand, um, you know, expand our horizons. And it's like, okay, let's figure out how you can get recommendations. Like, you know, beyond yeah. of like what's the popular out there, like let's there are other authors that are out there you can try out who might be your yeah. friends. So awesome. So let's talk about women's tropes. What is your favorite trope? 
Okay, it will have to be, my favorite will have to be Age Gap. Oh, MG. I love me a good Age Gap story. And if it's a cougar, oh, it, that's my favorite. <laughs> like if it's an older woman and a younger man, I am here. Give it to me. Love it. So, but Age Gap, anything forbidden, I can do those. Those are my two go-to. So do you have any recommendations for age gap? I actually do. Yeah. <laughs> okay. My uh, Amanda from Escape in a Book gave me Birthday Girl by Penelope Douglas for my birthday. I loved, love, love that book. It's not black romance, but let me tell you something. Yeah. I throw that on everybody. I be like, you need to read Birthday Girl. <laughs> I'll throw, I'll throw it at you quick. I'm like, Birthday Girl by Penelope Douglas. You need to read that. I love that book. Pike is just so, like, super sexy to me. So it's like, whew. But um, his weekend special by India Carter, I found um, it's more of a cougar story. Mm -hmm. That's, like, a favorite of mine. It's um, his weekend special. Um, Let Me Love You by Alexandria House is another one and it's a older woman younger man and mm -hmm. also the time shared by india carter this one is more of a older man younger woman and christina jones has one from her connecticut kings um series i think it's called past interference mm -hmm. this one is cougar older older woman younger man and it can be it can be age gap and forbidden because she's like the coach of a football team and he's the owner's son. So it can be both of them. It is so spicy and just, oh, you need to read it. It's really good. So I think it's called Pass Interference by Christina Jones. Yeah. So those are my recommendations. I love this. Oh my gosh, I can't wait. I'm always looking for good H cap, especially Cougar. Like those are like so good. I really love it. I have issues with older men and younger women, you know, like that had some issues about that, but your other other women, younger men, like I'm here for it. <laughs> I know. I am I have I think I posted on Twitter the other day and I was like, um, I need more cougar stories. I started The Forbidden Man by Katrina. I was gonna Hale. say, did you start yeah. it? Didn't finish it, but I need to pick that one back up. Okay. But I, that one is on my radar too, because she commented on my Twitter post and I was like, okay, I'm definitely going to get to it. So that is one that I need to finish. But I got to like page 89 and I liked it so far. So okay. I have no doubt that I will, I will like it moving forward. We so shall see I read, that. did you read On the Island by Tracy Garvis something? On so the Island? Yeah, they're stranded. They have a plane crash and they get stranded on the island. It's so an older woman who's supposed to be their teacher um, for the younger men who's 16, but they're stranded for years. So, like, it takes a while. It's slow burn, but it's like uh, stranded on an island, <laughs> you know, forbidden because it's like yeah. almost teacher, student teacher relationship. So, um, I'll send it over and I'll put it on the show notes. Um, yeah. but that's a good one. So, Okay. And then a love story, I would tell you, so love story is not a romance, is the idea of you. Um, have you have you heard of that one? No, haven't heard That's, of it. Um, it's Robin Lee. Um, she's an actor. She's a black author. Um, oh, it's God. actually so, but it's a love story. I cannot stress this enough. It is, you're going to be so mad at the end, <laughs> but it's a boy band um, member. And a four-year-old mom, and they get together and steamy. It's so good, so so I good. Saw that. Huh? I saw. That. I heard a lot of people was talking about they did not like the ending. I'm gonna put that back on my on that my list. Robin Lee, just a, there's a, a support. Thought. Robin Lee, there's a support group. There's a Facebook group about it. We're dying for her to write a sequel to just walk it through. <laughs> you know, it's a love story. It's not a romance, but it's just so so good. It's like it's. The idea, like you know, like Harry Styles fan fiction. So, but it's so good. <laughs> awesome. All right, so let's talk about your least favorite show. Why is that? Ugh, okay, we can do. I think my least favorite will have to be Best Friends to Lovers, and it's personal. I, <laughs> it is personal. I'm telling you, I've had a bad, 
a really bad experience with the best friend. And so from that experience happened, I was like, you know what? I, I think on my list is like, never date a man with a female best friend. <laughs> <laughs> so I've had a bad experience about this best friends to lovers thing, but I don't read it that much. I did read a, I did read one this year that I really, really enjoyed. And but I tried to stay away from best friends to lovers, but one of my favorite authors wrote a best friends to lovers so, um book this year. And I read it and I enjoyed it. Okay. Yeah, I like friends to lovers. I don't love it. I'm like it's too slow burn for me. I'm like, they should just get together. Like in my head, I'm like, eh, I don't know. But it's not like, it's not my favorite. It's not my, it's not my least favorite. Um, that's about a second chance moments. But best friend to lover is definitely one of those. Like, I'm not too thrilled on it. So I agree. Um, awesome. So I, you seem to like contemporary. Do you read other top genres or just mainly contemporary? You know, it's it's mainly um, mainly um, contemporary, but if I do step out, sometimes it'll be more um, paranormal. I I got down this rabbit hole of a uh, shifter romance mm -hmm. from this MM author. Her name is um, A. E. Via. Mm -hmm. She had this um, romance. I can't remember the name, but it was really I enjoyed it. Um, about a vampire and a shifter that were fated mates. Mm. <laughs> so if I were to step out, it'll be more along the line of paranormal. So okay. that's main, and that's, that's rare. <laughs> yeah, I feel you. So let's talk about contemporary. What has been some of your favorite books that you read this year? My favorite books this year? Yeah. You know, um or last year this my my favorite book this year had to be it was um time shared by the time shared by india carter i love that book it's in, it's an age gap too but oh my god the hero his name is i think his name is sai he was so damn sexy to me and he just had this commanding presence that when he talks you just have to it makes you want to stop and just listen and i was reading the book and i could have feel his presence just reading the book it was so so good i think that's one of my favorite i've read this year love um unsolicited by alan Alexandria, Alexandra Warren. Love Unsolicited was one of my favorite um, books this year too. Like who doesn't like a man who drops money in cash up just for your time? Like we love to see it. So <laughs> <laughs> that was another um, book that I enjoyed and Go Deep by um, Wilsey Adams. That mm -hmm. was the best friends to lovers book that I read. That was really, really good. Like really really good and realsy is one of my favorites so i actually have i borrowed a couple of realsy's um book and I'm, I'm trying to catch up with like the unlimited and it's like on my tbr so i'm grateful it's one of your favorites so i'm excited to look for her to read yeah she's she's pretty good yeah pretty good very very good so what are some of your most anticipated new releases for 2020 or 2021 doesn't matter. You know, I don't have anything for 2021, but for 2020, it was Entangled Pursuits by Brenda Jackson, because it's a spinoff of her Protector series, which was phenomenal. You need to really need to read that. The Protector series is a spinoff of the Granger Brothers series. And Brenda, she is like top notch for spinoff series, and she's like a pro at that. But Entangled Pursuits was my aunt, my most anticipated read for this year by Brenda Jackson. Oh, I'm excited. And what was your TBR? Whew, chow. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me. <laughs> Too many. Are you a mid reader or are you yeah. like you said? Are you a mid reader or are you just at TBRs? I I am more of a mood reader. Right now, the 
this um the book on my TBR is Legend Born. It's a mm-hmm. YA fantasy, mm-hmm. and you know I like. It seemed like it screamed black girl magic for me, and that's mm-hmm. all I needed to hear. You know, black um, black kids in fantasy. You know, magic. They said it was like a King Arthur retelling, so I'm mm-hmm. really excited for that. So that's what's on my TBR right now. But I'm totally a mood reader. I don't really do TBRs. I just be like, well, I'm feeling like reading this. And I have so many books in my Kindle. I really need to tackle that instead of falling for these new releases that comes out every other day. Well, <laughs> don't you feel like when there's sales in your Kindle, you're like, oh, there's a sale going on Kindle. You're like, you go in and you buy it and you're like, oh, I already bought it like two years ago. <laughs> you're like, it's like the same it's a black hole of like books like I got thousands of books in the kitchen I'm like I'm like I don't know but it's just a tiny object you know? yeah yes yes that's where I'm at right now I and I think Danielle Danielle Allen just brought out a new book a few days ago too I should know this like I just purchased the book the other day but yeah that's another one I want to read this Danielle Allen's new book. I should know the name. Ugh, I'm horrible. <laughs> You're good. This is awesome. So tell us where I can find you online. Online, I am at Shades and Pages on Instagram and on Twitter. I'm at Bella T Bombshell. I don't know why I picked Bella T Bombshell. It sounded cute at the time. But yeah, I'm at Bella T. Bombshell on Twitter and on Instagram. I'm on, I'm at Shades and Pages. So you can see me on Instagram pairing lipstick covers with lipstick and singing horribly in my stories. <laughs> I love following you on Instagram. So this is awesome. <laughs> um, so thank you for being on the show. I love your recommendations. Me. Thank you for having me. I had fun. If you enjoyed this podcast, feel free to share with friends, subscribe, or rate and review the show. This is the easiest way to support this podcast. Want to join a romance loving community? Want weekly book recommendations, monthly author Q&As, and book recommendation meetups? Make new friends? Then join our Patreon community. To sign up, please follow the links in the show notes. But to read next podcast is part of the Frolic Podcast Network. Find more podcasts to love on frolic.media slash podcast. Thank you so much for listening and have a great day.